Howdy folks, Lisa here again at Everything is a Lie back in Perth City in Western Australia today looking for more mud flood evidence and fake history also continuing the attack of the benevolent societies as I like to call it um, today I'm just going to wantonly burst open Pandora's box here as we look at St Mary's Roman Catholic Cathedral it's four different stages of construction and the surrounding area I say wantonly in jest it's taken me quite a while to get to it and to whittle down all the the relevant information into its most useful parts I really feel I've uncovered uncovered something major here or maybe I've just lost the plot you know mud on the brain but anyway I'm keen to know what you all think too if you hang in for the end let me know drop me a comment as usual all the links are below for you um, I'm also going for the world record of the ye oldie ladeline as UAP calls them somebody better notify the Guinness Book of Fake Records we have four so get comfy and enjoy Wake up and listen. And here we are at the Heritage Council of Western Australia yet again. Are we excited to be back, folks? Looking at St Mary's historic value. The sighting of St Mary's Roman Catholic Cathedral in the centre of Victoria Square reflects the original intention of the colonial surveyor general in reserving land for a church square. St Mary's Roman Catholic Cathedral is closely associated with the Benedictine brothers who built the original portion of the cathedral in 1865. Bishops Griver, Gibney and Clune who administered the various phases of construction and prominent West Australian architect Michael Kavanagh who designed the 1930 extension which we might have to look into him. Social value we know all about. Rarity. The enclosed garden setting of the cathedral grounds is rare within the city. The unusual juxtaposition of the original building and its later addition is an oddity in ecclesiastic architecture in Western Australia. I'd venture way further than just Western Australia. Um, we won't worry about the damp. The mosaic tile floor in both chapels and the sanctuary in 1930 has cracked both in a north-south and east-west axis. You might be able to work out why. Overall, the building appears to be in sound condition. Integrity. Okay, documentary evidence from page three. The Roman Catholic Cathedral of St. Mary stands high, on high ground in the center of Victoria Square, a site which was designated on the first town plan as Perth's Church Square. St. Mary's Roman Catholic Cathedral was built to supersede the earlier and smaller St. John's Pro Cathedral. The administrator of Perth Diocese, Bishop Serra had recently completed the construction of the Bishop's Palace using the Benedictine brothers from Subiaco and New Norcia and was keen to construct a more worthy cathedral for the Perth Catholic community. Bishop Serra considered the reverse land in Victoria Square opposite his new palace an ideal site for the new cathedral and accordingly requested that the governor cede this site to the Catholics of Perth. We'll skip a bit there, it's all just details and story. In 1862, a subscription list was opened for the construction of the new cathedral and by 8th of February 9, 1863, enough funds had been raised for Bishop Salvado, the only Catholic bishop in the colony at the time, to lay the foundation stone. In the absence of Bishop Serra, Father Griver administered the building project, work on the cathedral progressed slowly, 
due to lack of funds and builders. There were few Mason brothers left in Perth, most of them having left for New Norcia. Their numbers continued to dwindle until there were only three left to work on the new cathedral, one of whom was the master mason, Brother Acioni, who directed the construction. The clay bricks used in its construction were taken from a property in Adelaide Terrace by January 1864 at a cost of £2,395. The walls had been raised to their full height. The bell tower was yet incomplete. The work then ceased for lack of money. The building was completed in January 1865 at a cost of £4,000. The new cathedral was named the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception. Early photographs show the cathedral to be a simple two-storey building in the Norman Gothic style with a tower on the southern side and a single storey and single storey side aisles. Sometime between 1897 and 1910, during the administration of Bishop Gibney, a number of alterations and additions were made to the cathedral. The new work emphasised the Gothic character of the cathedral. Both Bishop Griver and Bishop Gibney are buried in the vaults of this early portion of the cathedral. We'll come back to that. Kavanagh designed an impressive academic Gothic cathedral. However, due to financial constraints, it was decided to temporary, temporarily utilise the existing cathedral as the nave and only build the new transept and sanctuary, leaving the completion of the new nave to later generations. The foundation stone for the new cathedral to be called St Mary's Roman Catholic Cathedral was laid on the 25th of April 1926. The limestone used in the construction was quarried from the same site as that used in Perth's GPO. Before I move on any further and we look at Mr Kavanagh, I just want to note that these references that they cite for the documentary evidence are um, the National Trust, which has been called into um, question many times, uh, and the other references noted on this page as documentary evidence, the history of the Catholic Church in Western Australia, uh, written by the Catholic Church, Centenary of the, Centenary of the Catholic Church in WA, 1846 to 1946, also written by the Catholic Church. So who writes our history other than Freemasons and churches? Okay, skipping down to page five for the physical evidence. That's what I'm mainly concerned with. So this document was written in 1995 before the fourth edition. So please note that the um, building actually consists of four separate phases. Uh, St Mary's Roman Catholic Cathedral is sited in an elevated position in a garden setting in the centre of Victoria Square. The cathedral grounds contain mature planting and lawn. The original boundary fence was constructed of brick in Flemish bond. However, the present cast iron fence and gates with stone pillars were probably built during the construction of the 1930 edition. Royal Perth Hospital is located directly north of the cathedral, while to the south is the Bishop's Palace, Mercedes College and St John's Pro Cathedral. St Mary's Roman Catholic Cathedral is cruciform in plan and oriented with the sanctuary facing east in the traditional manner. The original cathedral was Norman Gothic in style and quite simple in detail. The windows to the original cathedral are a pattern of diamond shaped coloured glass with painted central rondels. A number of alterations were made in the early 1900s. We won't cover them all. Uh, internal access changed. On to Mr. Kavanagh. Kavanagh's expressive academic Gothic design for the transept and the sanctuary of St. Mary's is built in limestone. The sanctuary is four bays long and the transepts two bays wide, each bay emphasized by a four light tracery window and separated by flying buttresses. The buttresses are capped with ornamental pinnacles. A heavily molded battlement extends around the top of the walls. The high pitched roof of both the old and the new buildings were covered in clay tiles in 1930. 
Internally, the new transepts and sanctuary feature a vaulted, ribbed and embossed ceiling. The crossing is supported on four large sandstone columns and the great east window, 7.5 metres high and 5.4 metres wide, is divided into seven lights by stone mullions with curvy linear tracery above and depicts the crucifixion. The sanctuary is flanked by two chapels with pyramidal roofs, the Sacred Heart Chapel and the Lady Chapel. Both chapels are highly decorated with an array of fine finishes. The Sacred Heart Chapel features a Carrara marble altar and the walls of the Lady Chapel are panelled in Sienna marble above the green marble skirting. The floor of the sanctuary is laid with mosaics to a design based on the Book of Kells. The tiles were manufactured by Malaco Brothers, Sydney. Other fixtures and fittings in the cathedral display the same degree of refinement and craftsmanship. So from there we'll just note that the references are Burke again, The History of the Catholic Church in Western Australia, published by the Catholic Church, and Oldham. So Wikipedia, because it's the best for this purpose, uh, Michael Francis Kavanagh, 1860 to 1941. I'm not going to bother with the rest of all that. I will note that he was 65 when he started the St Mary's Cathedral job. Kavanagh was also the inaugural vice president of the Western Australian Institute of Architects in 1896 and the Institute's president between 1903 and 1905 and 1915 and 1917. The WA Institute merged with the other states' institutes in 1930 to form the Australian Institute of Architects. Um, it's the pictures we really need to look at here. Help me out. 1895, 1903, no, uh, St Bridget's, 1904, we'll look at that, St Patrick's in Fremantle, what a beautiful building that is, uh, 1898, what we're talking about now. Uh, Clontarf building, not far from me, 1901. We'll be looking at that one. Peppermint Grove, that'll come up if I ever get to the rest of Cottesloe. This is just down the road from the cathedral. Beautiful building. Fremantle Fire Station. Don't think I've covered that. Hard to tell. Esplanade. 1898. 1902 Orient in Fremantle. Yeah, he's he's been very busy, hasn't he? Wonder where that one went. I'm noticing more of this in the last year. Red links. Where did the page go? Where's that? Perth, 1903. I don't know that building. Wow. Nice. So that's Mr. Kavanagh. I think you kind of get the gist of what he was about. Moving on, let's look at the tiling in the Moloccos. Okay, sorry, momentary delay. I had to look at that, um, what's it called, the Manning Building, because I thought it was another building. But what a strange building. This is it getting its makeover from cream to grey, but this black and white photo is probably our best bet. What's going on there? Look at the... Look at this. One column, two column, two column, two column, three column. One, one, one. What a strange building. 
He's probably got a hole on the floor under there. <laughs> Moving on. So we'll take a look at the Malocco brothers next, who first came to fame at another St Mary's Cathedral, the one in Sydney. Uh, the three brothers, this entry covers all three of them. I'll just kind of abbreviate. They arrived, the first arrived Peter in Australia in 1908 um, and submitted designs to do the the Irish Saints Chapel in 1910. There was 11 years difference between the eldest and the youngest, which is very hard to tell in the photos. I don't know which was it, which they all look baby face there. Worked on, I'll show you their works. I thought this was interesting. I couldn't find any signs of uh, official masonry or anything like that, that in their associations. Peter was interned on the outbreak of war with Italy on the 11th of June, 1940, partly because of his membership of the Italian Chamber of Commerce. After a few days in Long Bay Jail and five weeks in an internment camp at Orange, he was released on the 14th of July, reputedly after the intervention of Kim Beasley Sr. and Arthur Caldwell. Uh, from there... So this is some of... Uh, we look at the Commonwealth Bank. This is some of the work in the cathedral. And it's all terrazzo. It's not tiled. Very beautiful. And that's also in the crypt. I think that was about... Oh, the other one we wanted to look at was the Irish one. See, now this isn't... Terrazzo, this is mosaic tile and very Celtic looking. So I looked up just out of curiosity where their building was too. I thought there might be something in that. And lo and behold, they got they bought this building in the 20s, I believe. Let's have a look at this. This is hilarious. One Booth Street, it's a mud flood building in Annandale. So what's the bet? That's red brick underneath. Okay, so other stuff they worked on would be the State Theatre, also in Sydney. Uh, oh, I can just hear my mother saying, I remember when you caught your head in the banister there? Yes, I remember, Mum. Uh, so that's a terrazzo floor there. That one looks more like tile. Uh, need need to go there, need to have a look, and it is temporarily closed at the moment, and in Sydney, unfortunately. The other building that they um, are famous for would be the Commonwealth Bank building, which we looked at briefly in the GPO episode. Uh, and I'll let the Channel 7 people wrap it up for us here when they tell us how they did it. The Moloccos introduced Australia's first concrete trucks, but it was turning that concrete into marble, like these columns at the Commonwealth Bank on Martin Place, that became a pillar of the company. The then secret technique, the then secret technique, secret technique. supported the company's wealth like the buildings they hold up. Okay, this was about the best I could do to match the angle um, with the trees, etc trying to compare the 1890 image to current so this is what they're saying is original so totally different totally different that looks like a window it looks like a broken window uh, this is a alcove and it's a completely different size Mouldings missing, yeah. Okay. Completely different windows. Looks like a different proportion too. 
Um, so comparing to the window at the side here, with the window at the side here, these windows come down much lower. This profile looks different as well. Didn't anyone at the Heritage Council think this was a bit absurd? Really? On the tower, so skipping the bottom two because we can't see them, same, same, different. Uh, the top here, this is castellated with the finials or the tech, or whatever you want to call it. Um, totally different profile there. What else can I say here? Oh, without even thinking, I mean, look at the vanilla sky. So typical. Okay, so I wasn't actually going to bother with the Wikipedia article in this instance because I didn't think we needed it. But I went back, I couldn't find the article I had originally seen and thought, well, the, there was a link on Wikipedia. I would come back for it. Oh, I did want to note here, though, the costs had further blown out to $32.9 million, which is a $33 million according to the uh, newspaper article that references that. And I also wanted to note the completed cathedral was officially opened by the then Archbishop Barry Hickey on 8th of December 2009 in a ceremony attended blah 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 33 bishops and 300 priests. Here we go again. So we'll look at the pictures briefly while we're here because there's one in particular that we need to discuss. Uh, okay, so we've covered that one, which could be any kind of photoshopping any church from anywhere on top of any hill with a vanilla sky background. Why is that such a tiny image? Ah, uh, here we go. This image should shoot my theory to pieces, but is it even a real photo? Supposedly from 1928 before stage three was added. I'm a bit skeptical myself though. I mean, it's not really hard to assemble that entire image from various photos, like an identikit, if you will. It's basically show us what we want to fit the story. And while that image does kind of look like it has all the right parts, that back wall is convex, clearly rounded, which doesn't fit the story at all. Where we are now, 2006, 2014, that's as it is now. This was before the extension, so this is the in quotations old part and this is the new part very different this is a um, pressed metal ceiling which doesn't look like it fits right either so was that recycled and it seems to be covering up here so I don't know if it sagged or if it never fit right in the first place um, I don't think I need to say much more about that. As it is now. This one's quite telling. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure why that's such a different colour, if that's been modified. Look here. What's this about? I have a better image. We'll go to that in a second. Strange image. The Even the, the sky doesn't look quite right in this one. Given that it's meant to be in 2005. Uh, 2014 as it is now. This one. So this is how it was finished. And it stayed like that for 60 years? Really? There's, surely they couldn't have left 
Rio bar sticking out like that. Look at it, all the way. What a hodgepodge mess. And why? And this is from the inside, so you can see where it's all been abruptly cut off. And there it is all neatly finished today. Okay, so I couldn't uh, get the article about the bishop being exhumed from inside the, 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 I don't know what to call it, stage one building, inside the stage one building. Um, this article, I had this in my original saved links. I read it and I forget the name of the priest or bishop that's doing the exhumation but he is a archaeologist as well as a um, priest or bishop and this article has disappeared I tried searching for it I tried various search methods I tried image searches because there was an image of the um, crosses on the floor denoting where there were two graves I believe in total where they were and uh, there was a photo of one um, body or casket being exhumed. Couldn't find the article at all. Went direct to the West Australian. Did a search. It's not there. There's an ad for Big Brother, of course, though. So, no, I'm not having a Mandela effect. The article was definitely there. And I read it uh, last August gone now funny that moving on we can look at the construction images now okay this looks like a good place to start here she is what a wonderful construction image this is um, this guy looks like he's actually doing some work I'm wearing a top hat There it is, under construction. Um, false alarm. My bad. Uh, I'm not sure about this shadow. This doesn't look right to me. That's all fully lit. If this is east and this is west, this direction, this is a midwinter photo only. So setting to get the sun at that angle. Um, and I don't think that shadow was represented correctly. Also note that that's the top there. So according to this image, they've only built that far. Why is it so dark inside? The light should be streaming in there. And the same here. The light should be streaming in through that open top and with the roof on etc now you can see clearly in daylight so not sure how that's so dark the tree is interesting and the very long grass by the look of it we'll move on almost identical stage of construction I'll say that we've changed angle because the tree is missing there's a hell of a lot more rubble they've just plowed through the fence to get in um, look at this <laughs> so this fence which was supposedly replaced about this time wasn't in later images it appears and it appears still just damaged um, not in this state but the bricks are pitted and damaged and it's whole again I don't know why you wouldn't just take the fence down or move the posts either side either out of the fence or in the fence how weird and again it's very dark looking inside there considering there's no roof Oh, 
And how is that dark inside? How is there so much shadow there? Yeah, it's just been trimmed off, hasn't it? Is that a regular thing? Put the crane inside? Moving on. Okay, you see what I mean about the light in this one? Again, there's, it's open, but it's so completely dark in there. It's dark in there. And here, no roof, but it's all very light. Interesting building method, especially this bit up here. You'd wonder why it was so urgent to get that piece on when they hadn't put the piece behind it. Hmm. And it doesn't actually look like there's a road in there. It might be there. Must be hard to move stuff around or carried by hand. There's a complete lack of shadow on that one, isn't there? Okay, what else have I got? This one. Okay. This was what I was talking about with the fence. That the bricks are all pitted and um, eroded away. Yet in later images we see the same brick fence is still there. Um, I think they cut a gate in it somewhere. I don't know. Is this even the real fence? It's just a Photoshop fence. Well the previous version glass plate photoshop i don't know what you call it photo manipulation this looks like it's drawn that doesn't look right at all it looks like it's completely hand drawn and very dark considering there's no roof All right, moving on. Okay, and the last of the construction images that I'll look at today, um, this was the one that, it shows the ceiling really well. So there's a detail here, but the ceiling is falling down on it. What I was saying about the uh, press metal ceiling not fitting right. maybe recycled um, and then you've got your four ye olde ladderlines do I get a record for that? four um, I did wonder there's some people maybe that's a bit odd some people sitting there something blurry there uh, this was the ladder that had the man with the top hat, I believe. I don't know what they're doing. They don't appear to be painting. There's not drop sheets or... It's interesting that they would have this much work going on that requires four ladders uh, and still have all these artefacts out. You would think these would be a little bit more precious that you wouldn't leave them out while there was work going on and you certainly wouldn't have installed them all for the first time if it wasn't finished I think we know what's going on okay so we'll take a look at it from above so this is stage one and stage two being that these were all supposedly changes and this portico was moved in stage four. So the original door would have been behind here. Um, very different finish. This is all red brick and um, stucco, render, whatever you want to call it. This is part of stage four. I've slowed this down, by the way. 
so stage one roof height was here Skip some of this. Okay. This is now stage four, which lifted the roof height of the nave to the same height as the rest. And then all of this is meant to be stage three, built in 1930. I'm just going to stop here. I wanted to look at this piece. What is that piece? And it's jagged edged, uh, as you see in the photos. So from the outside, to me, it looks like a buttress, but why, why there? And it's sh just shorn off at the top. There's nothing there. There's also no window there, whereas there's matching I'd say original windows here but nothing there what happened to that one or was it never there so in trying to work out why that piece would be there because it doesn't fit with either this extension or this extension loosely extension because I don't think it was I'm looking at this, this is St. Francis Xavier in Adelaide. Am I looking at this part of a tower? So joint on to the building. Let me get an image. So here's a slightly closer image. Why would you finish a wall like that? Even if you were going to keep extending later in the same materials, why would you finish it like that? And then as from above, cut off. You can see it on top there in this old um, still from the NFSA Footage, which looks like it's a different color there so this is colorized this film is also manipulated oh boy okay before we wrap things up for the day we need to take a bit of a look around the block um, just to compare levels and building heights etc so the first thing I wanted to point out, if it wasn't already obvious, is look at the size of the Bishop's Palace compared to what would have been the original church. Um, so it's no wonder the Catholic Church couldn't afford a church because they must have spent an absolute mozza on building the Bishop's Palace. Okay, so this is the, the whole precinct here is the Mercedes College, Mercedes, Mercedes, however you like to say it. Um, this building, mud flooded, the original St. John's Pro Cathedral in here, and they the college lists the Holy Cross building just in here as, somewhere here, uh, as the oldest building um, of the whole school. Uh, I have to check the year on that uh, and that's definitely heavily built into the slope um, and whitewashed brick and stuccoed and made to look like stone again um, the chapel is below road level this is fairly close to original road level um, it may have had another story underneath though and as far as uh, these all appear to be single story cottages down the bottom uh, this is mud flooded over here the older buildings in here I'll get some images for you they are some appear either mud flooded or they've lost their bottom story not sure and 
uh, the, some of the original hospital buildings are the same time period. So they've got a lot to tell us as well. But this larger building doesn't happen until the late 60s or 70s. And it is built into a slope. Uh, heading back down this way towards the centre of the city, you're on a gentle slope downwards all the way to the GPO and then we start going upwards heading up to West Perth which is our highest point near Kings Park uh, and the observatory up there. We'll get there one day. And down this way heading east, the church here is the highest point until we get to uh, East Perth up near the cemetery. Uh, which is the highest point. So a few gentle undulations in the road along there. Mm, I think that's about all we need to know. It slopes down this way, down to Wellington Street and further down. And this way we slope back down to Hay Street and then St George's Terrace. So this is a high point. How these buildings ended up mud flooded there is actually by the look of it another story under the bishop's palace and nice underground car park again underground car park that's all very convenient if you don't want to be seen oh the car park i forgot to mention the car park that must have gone in with the stage four extension uh, strange how they left the original gate there Okay, so learnings in this episode for me were that our history is not entirely curated by government and Freemasons. It would appear that the church publishes its own history, or perhaps they only translated it. From what language, I can't tell you. But what better way to achieve this than with a group of Benedictine monks in a secluded and self-sufficient township over 130 kilometres north of the main city. That's a long way by horse and cart. So to sum up my thoughts before I leave you, in the 1930 edition, um, which if it is the original building and it looks that way to me, we probably need to consider what's missing. What's missing from a cathedral of that size and potential age. There was a distinct lack of the type of substantial pipe organ that most cathedrals would have. You know the type I mean, the ones with the huge organ that fills the entire end of the building under the major rose or arched window. There was also no formal crypt below the building until 2009, or was there? They apparently built the cathedral with plans to build some kind of tower or belfry as noted. Either that or the tower has somehow been removed. What was previously located where the later hospital buildings have been added? I can't answer that for sure but there are definitely a couple of original buildings still in there in the surrounds. Some with unusually high windows and steps. Um, you know the type. And then, well, what really happened here? I've got to share with you my gut instinct because it kind of hit me like a bolt when I first attempted to make this video back in August last year. It made me feel quite ill, if I'm to be honest. Perth is an extremely remote city. We are thousands of kilometres from all the other major capitals and West Australia was allegedly fairly late to agree to federation with the rest of the other states. Whilst many reasons are cited, I can't tell you how many are fabricated and uh, fake news. I do have to wonder if the decision was forced. So when I say forced, we have no history of any major conflict on this side of Australia until Darwin is attacked by Japan in World War II. Uh, similar stories in Sydney but in the significant re-rendering of our history as a, 
Elizabeth Durack mentioned in her historical account, was Perth taken by force? Is that part of what they've erased and how? Sinking Gut Fields says St Mary's took a significant hit. Possibly a hospital wing as well? Now I'm just speculating here, so there's that. As always folks, please make up your own mind. I'm just here to gather the evidence and present it in the best way that I can. You decide. Coming up, I'm not going to talk about the Kung Flu. I'm giving that as little attention as possible. I will leave you a link to the best info I have on that if anyone is interested. Take it or leave it. I will do a formal introduction in the coming weeks so you can meet me, Lisa, or Miss Everything is a Lie, as someone recently called me in the comments. Thank you, I love it. Correct pronoun too, not that I particularly care. Uh, obviously this isn't about me, but I like to know who I'm watching, so I'll put it out there. You will either be interested or not. That's the best bit about YouTube. Take it or leave it. Just don't ram it in my face like the mainstream media does. Also, we have an asylum still to look at, which was where I was going before I got distracted by Cottesloe. So we will get back to that. Uh, I was also thinking I'll clip together some other interstate asylum videos just for the jaw-dropping size and architecture of them. We might just have some show and tell there with music, um, enough of me talking. And then as soon as we can travel again, because I can't travel more than 50 kilometres out of town at present, I'm thinking I need to get myself up to New Norcia where they built an entire monastic town, apparently instead of only one cathedral. Um, I can give you the gist of it from here, sitting at my desk, without visiting it, but I think we'll all get more out of it if I can get up and uh, really have a look at the lower halves of the buildings. For now, I'm going to keep pushing out mud flood and other fake history because moving forward, the people of Perth deserve the truth. And I'm not sure about you guys, but I am so tired of having my energy drained by the absurdity of the world at present that I enjoy having something wholesome and informative to watch. I hope you do too. If you're enjoying it, please enjoy. If not, don't watch it. Honestly, the best we can all do for ourselves at this point is to keep your vibe high and hopefully we can lift the collective higher with us. So for now, stay safe, my lovelies, and keep smiling because we are winning. It will all get better soon. I promise. I just know it. Much love to you all. Catch you next time. Bye-bye.